Hello valued viewers, I hope you're all doing very well. It's mid December 2022 and the KA50 Camov Black Shark 3 module has just been released. If you already have the Black Shark 2 module, it costs just under $10 at the moment to upgrade or if you want to buy it from scratch, it's full module price. We're going to look at miscellaneous functions, then the new INS navigation system, the new external and cockpit 3D model, and pilot model, the IGLA air-to-air -air missiles, and finally the missile launch warning system. First, miscellaneous. Starting in main menu, options, special, cycle down to KA-53. Various options here, but really useful if you're an English speaker, turn the cockpit to English. It will save you a lot of stress. Okay, next, mission editor. When you're setting up your Black Shark 3 in a mission, click on it here. And then additional properties here. You can choose which version of the aircraft you want to fly, the 2022 or the 2011 version. Also, regards the new INS system, it has a much more accurately modelled navigation INS system in here. One of the big changes is the alignment time and type. You can choose here your default alignment type. Fast alignment, which we believe is 3 minutes. Normal alignment, 15 minutes. Normal alignment with gyro compassing. 20 minutes. Also, how Melsim do you want the INS system? Do you want the realistic drift and degradation of the navigation system? And you can turn it on there. If you're me, I prefer to have it off because I can only cope with so much. And finally, default helmet mounted device, automatic, or the helmet mounted sight or night vision goggles. Next, let's look at the exterior 3D model. I figure the best thing to do is take a Black Shark 2 and put it next to a Black Shark 3 and we can see the differences. Now the Black Shark 2 is obviously several years old and of course the improvements in technology are constant and you can already see this Black Shark 2 where the kind of polygons where the edges start to break down, where the textures start to break down. When I zoom in, you see that? You can see kind of um, Curves aren't very curvy when you zoom in. And that's just because, like I said, technology changes quickly. And so old stuff starts to look old pretty quickly. See these textures look like a mesh and stuff like that. And then if we were to look at the new one, see you go as close as you want pretty much and it doesn't break up. Also the curves look curvy, they don't look polygony. All the rivets and stuff don't break up. Again, look at the curves and the shading. This bit's pretty awesome, the blur. In terms of how many more polygons are there, I don't know, but probably many more times, I would imagine. Needless to say, the Black Shark 3 has an extra pylon on the outside to carry its air-to-air -air missiles, and we'll go through that. Shortly. If we look at the engine cowling, it's a pretty good example. You can see Black Shark 2, you know, they're just painted on, textures there, and where you can see through, it's not very detailed. You go to the Black Shark 3, it's actually all modelled, all the meshes are modelled. Stuff, the gubbins in the engine is much more detailed. You can see stuff in there whirring and spinning, which is pretty cool. I mean, it's what you expect now from a 2022 module, so it's standard practice, but you know, it's, it's what you pay your money for at the end of the day all these vents and stuff. All right, let's have a look inside. In terms of cockpit, it's again, what you would expect from a 2022 aircraft. Rather than me yapping, I'll probably just uh, move the camera slowly over the cockpit and you can make your own decisions. Although the new INS is modelled, as far as I'm aware, the function is going to be the same with how it was for the navigation system.
Okay, that's pretty much it for the model. In fact, let me just show you the pilot real quick. There is Dimitri, or whatever his name is. Handsome man. Three kids. Mortgage to pay. Air-to-air -air missiles have been added to the outer pylons only. You can carry on each pylon two 9M39 Iglers, total of four. Using them is a little bit strange. It's not really like anything I've ever seen in DCS, so it takes a while to get your head around it. There is one extra control. In fact, for the whole helicopter, there's really only one extra HOTAS control you need over Black Shark 2, and that is weapon selection air-to-air -air mode. Otherwise, obviously, the old controls are the same, to arm and fire the missile you've got release weapons designate target you've got designate target so first select air to air weapons you will see here well i can't read russian so i don't really know what it says but what i do know is currently there are four missiles we have available and we have the fourth missile selected next master arm we can fire the missiles in manual mode or automatic automatic will automatically detect the target in the field of view and lock onto them Manual will mean that we'll need to use the target designate once the target is in the field of view to lock onto the target. I haven't seen any reason to use manual yet, so we're just going to leave it on auto. And before we can use the selected missile, we first have to press release weapon. That will not fire the weapon, that essentially arms the weapon. And it starts a countdown, a 60 second countdown. The first five seconds of which you will not see because they are a basic alignment five seconds. You will see the countdown start at 55 seconds, counting down to zero. Once you see the countdown start in the HUD, the missile is then live. You can then find a target, put it on the reticle, which is there, which has a one degree field of view. If it detects the heat source, you'll obviously get a tone. It'll lock on automatically, as long as you've got auto mode selected. Then press release weapon and it will fire the missile but there is a time limit. If the countdown gets to zero, then that's it. The missile has run out of coolant and it's trashed. It will then automatically cycle you onto the next missile, missile three in this case. You can temporarily stop the countdown and save the missile. To do that, you'll look down here and you'll press reset. You can only stop the countdown before the countdown has got to 30 seconds. At that point, when you're ready, you can start the countdown again with release weapons and a reduced countdown will start and otherwise the same rules will apply and you cannot stop the same missile countdown again. It's a bit weird. It's all because there is a finite amount of coolant in these missiles. You've got to fire the missile before it runs out of coolant. So let's try those scenarios. So as you can see, I've got missile four selected. I'm now going to press release weapon. That is going to start the countdown for the first missile. First five seconds of alignment then the countdown starts at 55. Okay, I've now got 55 seconds to put something in my reticle and fire. In this case, I'm not, I'm just gonna leave it to count down and show you that the missile will be trashed. Oh dear, I couldn't find a target in time and bang, missile is trashed. We can no longer use missile four. We're now starting again with missile three. We know we've got air-to-air -air mode selected already because we've got this symbology on the HUD. Next, we're going to start the countdown with weapon 3, but show that we can stop it before 30 seconds. So, release weapon, countdown will begin, 5 seconds of alignment. Okay, now before it gets to 30 seconds, I will reach down here and I will delay you. Reset, and that stopped the system. If I want to carry on again with that missile, I reselect air-to-air missiles, air-to-air -air weapon station. You can see it selected number three, and I can now press release weapon again, and it will start down again, but at a reduced time. So it's five seconds of alignment, and now it's starting from 25 seconds. I've now got 25 seconds to fire before the missile trashes, and I will not have another chance to delay it. So it's kind of a second chance saloon for the missiles. If you think this is really annoying and something you really don't want to have to worry about in combat, well, that's true, but that's Russian missiles, I'm afraid. Now, is it that a lot of missiles are like this and it's just that these ones are modeled more accurately? Who knows? I don't know. It's interesting, though. And that's it. Another missile trashed. Right, now we're going to use it properly. Simba, would you uh, do your God-given task, please, and please go out there and be a target, a lovely, juicy target for me. Okay, Simba is being a delightful fellow, so I'm going to take off. You said Here. there was a row Simba. of fresh peach trees out here that I yes. can find fresh fruit in, right? You do like peaches, Simba. Right, I am gonna, pre I've already got my missile selected, obviously, I'm gonna press release weapon, wait for the alignment, and then the countdown will start, at which point I put a Simba in the reticle, 
Oh, there you go. No, I put him in the reticle. You see, it finds him automatically. Before I take it away, it goes away. That's our one degree field of view. I do apologize, Simba, but I'm gonna have to shoot you. Once I've got him like that, push, release weapon, and he goes boom, boom. Ha <laughs> ha, you can dodge it. Now, one thing you'll find with these is these missiles are pretty much hopeless. They've got like a war, a, what, Simba, a one, one and a half kilo warhead or something? So, yeah. oh, I did pretty well, look. You're going down, are you going down? Yes, I am. How about that? Well, I take that back, value viewers. I guess it depends. It's luck of the draw. Because I've put four of these missiles into a hind before, and it didn't even scratch it. Let's see if we'll shoot them on the ground out of interest. I've got my alignment. I've got my stun. Ha 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 ha! You're a crowd simba. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Obviously, I'm not very well valued viewers, and I'm really annoyed about it. Right. Um, anything to add about Igla, Simba? Uh, no. Standby for missile launch warning system, which is actually pretty cool. It's linked into the laser detection system and countermeasure dispensing system. So what we can do is if we turn our onboard defense system, ODS on, and on our screen, we click here until we get to onboard defensive system, that's that there. We will be warned if we're being highlighted by a targeting laser. That will be shown by a yellow band around the outside of the circle in the rough direction the laser is coming from. Additionally, if a missile is fired at us, we'll have a kind of red arrow beeping on here showing us where the missile is coming from and an audio tone to let us know that we're being fired at. The dispensing system will detect where the threat is coming from and send out countermeasures automatically, assuming we've got the ODS turned on. Simba is out there in a Apache. I'm um, taking off now, Simba. Tell me when you're highlighting me with a laser and when you're firing, just so the viewers can kind of piece it all together. Uh, George has you. I'm going to tell him to lock you up. Yellow band. Yep, that is George lazing you, and now I'm going to give him permission to fire. Countermeasures out, missile detected. And that's it. And now I'm a dead Simba. So that is the new missile launch warning system linked with the other systems in the plane, which are actually pretty cool. Just remember, if you want the automatic flares and stuff, you've got to have that turned on there. Simba, I think that's our summary of the uh, BS3. Anything y'all want to add? Uh, George is mean. He just keeps firing at you. Right? Yeah, well, I am an audio naughty camel. I'll leave you as I hope that was useful and see you later. Ouch. See you later.